Today is Friday, April 3rd, 2020, so get excited, since it's time for another SciFax. Today's SciFax comes from Erin, a student who was a real leader in my classroom. Just don't ever ask for her opinion about Arby's, though. I made that mistake once, and a riot ensued. Erin wants to know. Dear Chef, I watched your first video lesson about what a virus is. In that video, I learned that viruses have DNA, that they are considered biological entities, that they cannot reproduce on their own, and that they exist in many different shapes and sizes. I was wondering though, how do the different shapes of a virus relate to the way it affects an organism's body? P.S. Bella is not better than me. Oh Aaron, we all know that Bella is the best. Anywho, that is a really, really good question. So, let's get to it and answer that scientific question. Viruses, which can vary in size but are always best measured using nanometers, are found to exist in a number of different shapes, such as the spherical shape of the coronavirus and influenza virus, the helical shape of the tobacco mosaic virus, the polyhedral shape of the adenovirus, and the complex shape of the unique-looking bacteriophage virus. All viruses have the same general structure, though, despite having different shapes. This structure, a nucleic acid such as DNA or RNA, wrapped in a protein coat called a capsid, is present in all viruses. The reason why viruses vary in shape, though, is simple. It is all due to the size of the nucleic acid core of the virus. For example, some viruses, such as the tobacco mosaic virus, have a long strand of RNA that is best covered by a long, helical-shaped capsid. Other viruses, such as the adenovirus, have a polyhedral structure surrounding its core of DNA, which is the most proportional, symmetrical, and efficient structure for the proteinaceous capsomeres that make up the capsid to form around this particular virus's DNA core. Note that viruses are essentially crystalline structures, and similar to diamonds and other crystals and gems, the atoms and molecules making them up will naturally arrange themselves into a best-fitting geometric shape. This still doesn't answer how the shape of a virus impacts how it affects another organism, though. While different kinds of viruses can cause different kinds of symptoms, they all essentially act the same way by invading your cells, hijacking the intracellular machinery, and then using it to reproduce, aka make more copies of themselves, and then burst out of the cell. Note that bacteriophages are unique, though, in that they have structures that allow them to inject their genetic material into a host virus without actually entering it perhaps due to them having a more complex genome. The complexity of the genome, aka genetic information of a virus, leads me to my next point, though. The size of a DNA or RNA molecule corresponds to how much genetic information and thus instructions are present on it. All viruses have a nucleic acid core containing DNA or RNA, but the size of a given virus's DNA or RNA core can vary. This leads to the unique shapes and sizes of viruses that we see, since a virus's structure must account for the size of its nucleic acid core. Larger amounts of DNA or RNA mean more genetic info and thus traits, meaning that larger viruses or ones with unique structures to hold more DNA or RNA could lead to the virus itself having more unique characteristics, traits, effects, and, if inside a host organism's body, symptoms. Well, Aaron, I hope that helps answer your scientific question. If you have a scientific question that you want to get answered by the chef, please write it in the comments below, and maybe you'll be the lucky person randomly picked to get your question answered in tomorrow's SciFax. Please subscribe to Chase Floyd Inc. as well, and turn on notifications so you'll be able to see tomorrow's SciFax video when it's released. With that being said, as always, we work bell to bell in Mr. Floyd's class, even during crazy times like these. 
So, I hope you learned a lot today, and we'll see you all tomorrow for another awesome edition of SciFacts with Chef Floyardee.